I'll read a poem called Pygmalion's Image. Uh, which uh, was, is based on Ovid's uh, account of the way uh, Pygmalion, the sculptor, made a marble image and uh, then fell in love with it. And it came alive, came alive in his arms, in his bed. What it occurred to me was he was probably terrified. And I tried to produce a sort of rather gothic image of Pygmalion's statue. Uh, this was written uh, in the quite early 1980s, I think. And I'd feel too that I was getting um, a bit more of a look in uh, to the women's movement. At first I was, uh, I think, regarded as not a proper woman poet um, because I wasn't writing about gynecology. And uh, in fact, I was writing about nuns. Uh, and I suppose that uh, I felt, by the time I wrote this, I, maybe I felt that I was part of, of the movement all the same, that there would be room for it, me in it. Pygmalion's image. Not only her stone face laid back staring in the ferns, but everything the scoop of the valley contains begins to move, and beyond the horizon the trucks beat the highway. A tree inflates gently on the curve of the hill. An insect crashes on the carved eyelid. Grass blows westward from the roots as the wind knifes under her skin and ruffles it like a book. The crisp hair is real, wriggling like snakes. A rustle of veins, tick of blood in the throat. The lines of the face tangle and catch and a green leaf of language comes twisting out of our mouth. <laughs>